Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we are going to take a look at RC half wave triggering of SCR. The link for the material will be provided in the description and you can download it for your reference. So let's get started with this particular topic. So what do you understand by RC half wave triggering of SCR? So let's first look at the circuit diagram. It is actually a triggering method for turning on the SCR through the gate terminals. So we use resistive and capacitive elements that is R over here and C over here to turn on the SCR through the gate terminals and that is why it is called as RC. And half wave is because of a specific purpose that I will be explaining at the end of this particular video. So now if you compare the circuit with our previous video on R triggering circuit of SCR, you can observe there is an additional capacitor that is used and we have removed the stabilizing resistor that was previously used and another resistor that was connected in series with the gate terminal. So two resistors are eliminated and we have additional diode over here that is D2 and we have a capacitor in place as well. So this capacitor and resistor will actually decide what should be the value of gate current or the voltage across the gate to cathode that must be supplied. So how do we understand this operation? The operation is very very simple. Let us first consider negative half su supply of AC current. So during negative half cycle the polarity of the supply will be minus and plus isn't it? So when negative supply is applied at this point it will directly appear with some amount of voltage drop through the load. So negative and positive at this point. That means anode of the ACR is connected to negative polarity and cathode is connected to positive polarity. That means even if you give gate supply at this point in time the ACR will not turn on. So this is very simple isn't it? The ACR is not going to turn on irrespective of the supply that you are giving to the gate terminals because anode is connected to negative and cathode is connected to positive. So it is reverse biased basically. Now what happens through the process? The current starts flowing through this path and the current flows through this path and the capacitor charges with a polarity minus and plus. Because plus is connected at this point it will directly start charging at this point with plus and negative is connected to the upper plate. Now what will happen is current will flow through this path and current will be flowing through this path. The reason why D2 is conducting is because negative is connected at this point, is appearing at this point, isn't it? The same polarity will be appearing at this point as well because they are connected in parallel. Same voltage will be appearing at this point as well, isn't it? So it is negative and negative is connected to cathode. That means diode D2 will be forward biased. And because of that, the current will be flowing through this path and current will be flowing through this path and it will return and it will keep circulating like this in this direction. You might ask me a question, why will the current only be flowing through D2? Will there not be a current flowing through resistor R as well through this path? Yes, it will definitely flow. Most of the current will pass through D2 but some amount of current which is minority in nature will be flowing through the resistor because you need to remember one point fundamentals the current will always choose the least resistance path the least resistance path is basically the diode isn't it because it acts as short circuit when it is forward biased whereas resistance always have some opposition in them isn't it now you might ask me a question as why is this negative half cycle operation very important so this is very important because the positive half cycle will basically be the continuation of the negative half cycle. So let us consider what happens to the circuit when positive polarity of the supply is applied. So during positive half cycle plus and minus is the polarity of the supply. This voltage that was stored, this voltage that was previously stored in the capacitor that was minus and plus previous cycle will be discharged through the resistor R. This is the first thing that will happen during positive half cycle. The capacitor had some energy, the charged carriers, it was previously charged to its maximum value and once that happens during the next half cycle, it will first discharge its energy that is available through a resistive element that is R over here. So once this discharge has happened, 
what will happen is that let us consider the same operation as that we saw previously. The positive voltage will appear at this point with some amount of voltage drop across the load. I am neglecting that for understanding it in a much better way. A negative is appearing at this point. That means anode is connected to positive terminal, cathode is connected to negative terminal. That means SCR is in forward blocking mode. But for it to enter into forward conduction mode, we need to give the gate current, isn't it? So now what will happen is that current starts flowing through this path from the supply and current starts flowing through this path. Now ignore the ones that are there in red because that has already happened and once it goes to positive off of the supply, the current starts flowing through this path, current starts flowing through this path, current starts flowing through this path and if you carefully observe the capacitor now charges with a polarity plus and minus. So previously it was minus and plus and it had discharged its energy. Now it is charging with the opposite polarity that is plus and minus because minus is appearing at this point and positive voltage is appearing at this point. Because of this positive voltage plus diode D1 will be forward biased. Very very important observation because positive is connected to anode and that is why D1 is forward biased. And because of that current starts flowing through this path and the SCR will be turned on. Previously what was happening? This negative voltage that was appearing across D1 was making sure that the D1 is open circuit. D1 is actually acting in reverse bias condition. But here positive voltage will ensure that the diode is in short circuit condition and gate current is flowing through the SCR. So SCR will move from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode and SCR starts conducting. That is our SCR is turned on with this method. So you might have a question as we have turned on the SCR, but how effectively have we done that? So that we will be looking at the waveforms and try to understand what is the advantage as compared to our triggering method of SCR. I've considered the same circuit for your reference and we will be looking at the supply waveform, the voltage across the capacitor and the overall output voltage that is available at the load terminals. And this will give us a clear understanding of the operation with respect to firing angle of this particular circuit. I am considering an AC sinusoidal supply. We are considering two cycles over here. I am extrapolating some lines over here to understand it in a much better way. And now we will start analyzing during the negative half cycle because that is where we started our analysis, isn't it? So previously, during negative half cycle, the capacitor was charged to the polarity minus and plus. That means during negative half cycle starting point, there will be negative voltage. The capacitor starts charging with a negative polarity of the voltage. And once positive half cycle arrives at this point, if you carefully observe, the capacitor starts discharging its potential that is available across it. It will start discharging through the resistor R that we have seen in the working and it charges with the opposite polarity that is plus and minus that we have seen during positive cycle. So it discharges and charges through the positive polarity and again at some point once it meets the required gate voltage. So remember this point once it reaches a required gate voltage that is the capacitor charges to a positive gate voltage. Let us say the SCR requires 2 volt as the gate voltage. Once the capacitor charges to plus 2 volt, what will happen? The SCR will be turned on and immediately the voltage will go to zero. Because this point, this point if you observe, this point and this point if you observe, when the SCR is conducting, it will be a short circuit. So the voltage at this point will be equal to zero. So basically the capacitor voltage across the capacitor will be equal to zero. So that is why the voltage at this point is going to zero, isn't it? So this is the arrowhead that is shown to discharge. The capacitor was discharging through the resistive element. The capacitor comes to zero voltage and again the cycle repeats that was seen previously. Now the same thing I will be extrapolating or completing this waveform with respect to positive cycle. So this particular portion I am retaining it. I am cutting at this point and I have pasted it over here. That is all. This waveform is very very simple if you try to analyze it in this particular fashion. Now what is happening is the firing angle alpha is nothing but this point over here. So you might be having a question as why is it at this point isn't it? 
so i mentioned when the capacitor charges to the required gate voltage that is the point where the scr turns on so when scr is turning on for a specific angle and that angle is called as the firing angle alpha so you are able to turn on the scr at this point so now what will happen to the output voltage so the output voltage will remain zero till the scr is turned on isn't it so once the scr is turned on what will happen some amount of voltage will be appearing basically whatever is the input will directly be appearing across the low terminals in this particular fashion again the output voltage will be equal to zero and once scr is fired it will be equal to the supply voltage so whatever is the supply it will actually follow the same plot of the supply voltage so you'll be getting a voltage like this again it will be equal to zero again the same nature continues now you might be having a question as how is it better than our triggering method of scr the question is fair enough so if you carefully observe in our previous video i told our triggering method can be used only between 0 to 90 degrees isn't it but over here we can trigger the scr from 0 to 180 degrees the entire region we will be able to trigger we have triggered it more than 90 degree for demonstration i have shown if this is 90 degree it is more than 90 degrees isn't it so you might ask me a question as how is it possible to trigger in this range for example if you want to trigger at this point how do you do that for that we will be changing the values of r and c that is nothing but the time constant the product of r and c so based on that the discharging of capacitor will be much quicker and based on that we will be able to achieve the firing angle difference so basically in our design based on the values of r and c we will be able to discharge it in a much better way or much quicker way as well so the main advantage of the circuit is scr can be triggered for a range of 180 degree but wait why are we calling this as half wave then so if you carefully observe we will be able to trigger the scr only during the positive half cycle because i mentioned during negative half cycle the anode will be negative cathode will be positive and that is why scr will be in reverse bias condition so during negative half cycle we have no control at all and that is why we call it as half wave rc triggering circuit of scr so the major advantage is we are able to trigger it for 180 degree so that is why we use this type of circuits i hope you were able to understand this video in a much better way in case you have any questions with respect to this topic please do let me know in the comment section below thanks for watching please do keep supporting thank you